Hi. <laughs> We're here to talk about you as an artist and the fact that you're quite a presence in Sydney Festival this year with both Force Majeure's work and your own work, yep. My All Why. Um, but I'm, I'd like to start with your name because I guess I just want to make it clear for people who would be listening to this uh, what they should know you as and what they should call you, what, you're, what you'd prefer yeah, cool. to be known as. Awesome. So that they're not stuttering or wondering or heard different versions. Yep, yep. I mean, I call you G. We yep. each call each other Twinny <laughs> because <laughs> we, we have the same birthday. We do. But Best um, that's, ever. that's just us. So tell me about a bit about the history of your name. Okay. Um, so uh, my island name is, is Genoa Gila. So when I, yeah, so when I was born, that's the name that I was given. Uh, and then uh, when I got to school, my name changed to Genoa. So, <coughs> yeah, so I guess you could say that Genoa is my English name. Genoa right, Gila. because the school decided Genoa yeah, wasn't. Yeah. So, yeah, so one of, one of my teachers changed my name from Genoa to Genoa. I, I'm still Genoa? not quite sure. With yeah. <laughs> nice so Australian Genoa. accent. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, yeah, so, that, so now I say that Genoa is my English name. Mm -hmm. um, but I now prefer to be called G because Genoa sounds like I'm in trouble with, <laughs> with <Yeah>. somebody. <laughs> like if I get called Catherine, and yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but also... Uh, Geno is uh, that's that's my family name, so only my family call me that. Yeah, so it sort yeah. of keeps that special for family. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I gu guess you could say that Geno is also my stage name now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And cast your mind back to I know you've had dance in your life since probably the moment you could walk. Yeah. And music, and all the culture of Torres Strait. Um, maybe talk a bit about uh, where your family's from and the fact that you didn't grow up in Torres Strait? Yeah, cool, cool. So, yeah, born born and bred in Rockhampton, central Queensland. <laughs> um, yeah, my parents, um, they were born in the Torres Strait. So my mum uh, on the Western side, she's from a village called St. Paul's. Um, yeah, on an island called Moa. It's a Moa Island, St. Paul's village. And my dad he grew up in Eggrill village on Darnley Island in the Eastern Torres Straits. Um, so I'm first generation uh, mainland born, Torres Strait Islander. Right. And your parents met? Yeah, it was, it was on quite... The, in Rocky? Uh, no, uh, in Brisbane actually. Okay. Um, I, and I only just asked my dad this, this question quite recently. I was just curious about it. Um, but yeah, he was working on the railway with his cousin brothers. And my mum, I believe, she was uh, she was packing meat uh, with all these other Torres Strait women. And at you know at that time, it was there was still segregation in white and black community. So there were uh, white discos in one area, and there were black discos in another. And so they went to the black disco. And my dad's cousin brother, he saw this woman walk in, one of them island women, and he was just like, "Oh, brother." can you distract her friend so I can talk to her? So my dad went, yeah, sure. And walked up to the friend and the friend was my mum. Oh, <laughs> and, and he distracted her pretty well, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, uh, yeah, still yeah. distracting her. Yeah, so yeah, so they met, they met in Brisbane in a disco. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Cool. That's very cool. Um, and so your parents, I think particularly your mother, uh, wanted you to learn traditional dance and traditional culture actually they both did they it was both quite did. um yeah that was that was like the thing that that we were go we were going to be taught i guess you know because we couldn't work the land or anything like that and there wasn't very many uh things to do i guess in terms of the way that they grew up yeah because they grew up in the islands and i was and yeah me and my brothers and my sister we grew up on the mainland so yeah so the first thing that you know that, that they taught us i guess was the traditional dancing and that pretty much happened as soon as I could sit up. Yeah. And did you have a particular talent for it as opposed to say your sister or other brothers or oh, well, not talent, but did you take to it more than Yeah, I guess did? so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think, think I did. I was, I was quite quite active. Um, but I, I was also really sporty as well, so that, you know, I think in terms of, you know, the physicality of me 
I was quite agile or, you know, um, so it was easy. Lent itself to, well, yeah. Well, it definitely wasn't easy. No, <laughs> no. it's like any but, uh, pretty full on strict training. Yeah, yeah, it was very strict training. Yeah, but, but yeah, um, I was up for it. And my parents were quite, they were quite strict with that as well. Hmm. So me and my brothers, yeah, we, we learnt traditional Torres Strait. And at what point did it become, did you realise you wanted to become an artist or work as a you know, oh, trainer? It's never dancer? happened. Never happened. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? It wasn't a decision. Well, no, because I wanted to be a big sporting star. That's yeah, why, right. yeah. Uh, you know, what I happened mean, to that career? Totally, totally fantasised about, you know, being Janet Jackson's backup dancer. But that was probably as far as it, you know, uh, as I ever thought that I was going to get. Um, uh, my mum, my mum's a visual artist though. So she was, she was already writing books and, you know, uh, making artwork and uh, exhibitions and like all sorts of things. Um, so it's been in the family for a long time. Like her brothers were also painters, artists. Um, and my dad, he's an artifact maker. So, and you know, so dad would make things and mum would paint them and then in her, you know, her, her designs and stuff. So it was all very much there, but I never thought that, you know, to like an artist was going to be my trajectory because I played a lot of sport. thought I was going to be the next Kathy Freeman, actually. <laughs> but that didn't happen because uh, I can't run that fast. Right. <laughs> so what did happen? Um, yes. Well, I ended up playing a lot of s team sport. So I got into touch footy and I got into athletics and, uh, and soccer. And, and I was pretty serious, actually, for a, for a time with sport. Um, because, you know, I mean, like the stereotype around blackfellas in sport as well, that was quite strong in Rocky. And, you know, if you, you made it, if you were really a really good athlete. And I was pretty good, like when I was younger, I was pretty good at everything actually, um, you know, without, without chucking the ego out there. Um, that, I was, that I totally thought that I was gonna pursue it. But yeah, d don't know. Um, started getting uh, anxieties about not ever leaving Rocky mm. and that that became the thing right so was I didn't want to get stuck yeah so it actually happened a friend of mine she was working in Brisbane she moved away she mo moved to Brisbane and she sent me this audition form for Nasda right and the, what I read out of it was I got a free trip to Sydney yeah and then I got to hang out in Sydney for like 12 days or something D just learning dance every day and I wow. mean I already was learning traditional dance every day and you know pop in Uncle Michael Jackson and you know and Jenna Jackson and all the film clips that were happening all the film clips that were happening on you know on the 90s scene lol <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was a natural fit for you yeah and you got out yeah, of Rocky well I kind of just went oh great you know free trip did the audition got in and the rest is pretty much history and your parents were like fine yeah, no, nah, my parents don't have any issues as long as, you know, we're looking after ourselves. We're at a clean house hmm. and we're respectable people. Hmm. And how do you feel now that it's led you? You've worked with a lot of different people yep. in their companies and in their work. But now you're at a, I mean, I know you've made your own work. But I guess my Uruwa is a more very personal work. Absolutely personal, yeah. How, how does that feel taking... All, all that you've done, but now doing it as an autobiographical Yeah, thing. I, it's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? Well, you know, I mean, we yarn these stories all the time, like in our families and stuff, you know, like uh, me and my brother, we always laugh about that time that he, we thought it was a good idea to take a skateboard and a bike up a hill and me sit on the skateboard and him ride down the, down the hill. Like we yarn about that stuff all the time. So, you know, some of those stories uh, in my show, it, it's quite funny that I'm I doing a story. show about my life. Oh, you know, like the- Yes, just, I know what you mean. Yeah, just that playing time. on the yeah. childhood- Memory. Kind of, yeah, yeah you know. So Mucking about. I mean, I was also working for a choreographer who uh, found it quite unique, this trick that I did by laughing with no ex facial expressions. And that came from home as well. Like right. me and my brothers playing the, the laughing game. 
and your whoever childhood supplied you with all your definitely all my creative unique tricks yep. yeah absolutely <laughs> so but but i because i'm dramaturg on the work yes I'm, you are uh, and i know a bit and there's some obviously there's some great light-hearted stories this is what i love about your performing persona and your creative persona but there's some quite heavy yes hard-hitting stories that are uh, also it's all autobiographical yeah. all taken from truth yes so does that feel different for you than being in a group work directed by someone else? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Does it feel liberating or is it confronting? Or oh, I think it's all the feels. Yeah, you know, like one part of it is liberating because I'm talking about it out loud and in a, in a, oh, serious is not the right word. Legitimate? But yes, yeah, in a legitimate kind of space. Um, and you know, and the, and the fact that we're actually looking at it seriously, so to speak, is quite liberating. So you're not so carrying it inside all the time. It's, no, it's a sort of but also talking about it all the time. That you know, so yeah, ups, ups and, and it can be hard going. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's good, good and bad. So all the, all the feels, you know, like it's good for people to know. And it's also good for me to talk about it because yeah. I don't really talk about those things. And you've got a lot of um, different performing personas and I guess, you know, I'm, I hate labels as much as <laughs> I know you do, but there's so uh, you get called comedian, you get called, uh, yeah. you know, um, storyteller, dancer, uh, all these sorts of things. Does, does it excite you to pull from all those things or are you, do you fight the labels and feel that it's, you get hemmed into yeah two oh, a combination of things. both so i like i like the labels but i fight the labels yeah yeah, yeah. they're useful because be th yeah that's right they're useful because they show all these different abilities but it's also conflicting because people like to just want one ability but i'm like nah i'm all of those yeah marketing it's hard to market yeah it should be a plus but it's yeah, yeah. and then i guess you've got to respond to how much of each of those things you That's are right. and how much you live in those worlds yeah yeah but also how much i'm actually presenting and that's that's quite tricky sometimes because it is a work about me but it's only a section of me and and then there's only sections of me in the section of me yeah so how deep can you go yeah if you're doing so many and i guess talking about the sto storytelling aspect of it because um of people's interest in it I guess as a as a text or as a, as a story yeah I know you've n you've consulted with your family and parents about yep. it um do you want to just talk a bit about because that's quite unusual for instance I'd made solo show and I would n never have consulted my yeah family or parents and I think it's an, so Im it's an important p part for you yeah it's just it's kind of a part of cultural practice there's there's a there's you know, it's like when you're in an industry that does not understand you or your people or where you come from and all of that kind of stuff, you need support to be able to articulate uh, appropriately how to move forward in these blurry kind of situations. Um, I know that was quite vague, but you know, I mean, my mum is filtered throughout my show and I had to have her come down and see the cultural content that I have in my show. And then also how, you know, where she sits in it and her perception as, as not only my mum, but as a Torres Strait woman. How as is well. that represented yeah. and does she, you know, feel comfortable and agree? Yes. Yeah. Also too, cause I, you know, I've taken that title as well, like Torres Strait Islander choreographer. And, I, and I've done that on purpose because the industry is not very familiar with indigenous politics. And uh, I find in my experiences that they tend to blur the two, the t Aboriginal and Torres Strait, excuse me, Torres Strait. And, you know, it's obvious that there isn't a lot of conversation around that, you know. Um, also too, like, like I do have a Aboriginal heritage, but the, the point that I'm trying to make is that we're two separate people and in order for that to happen I, I feel like I need to make this statement even though I am a choreographer performer actor what you know whatever 
uh, I still I find it quite important that I state myself as a Torres Strait, whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I do that, then my whole work will be perceived as a Torres Strait Islander work. Mm -hmm. So I need to make sure that all of everything that I am doing is in the best representation of my people, even though I'm not representing my people. I'm only representing myself and my story. I you, are, but you are Torres Strait, yes. so there, there, there's a so there's the truth. But you're a contemporary artist that's working right. in all these mediums. Yeah, and there's so you know, I mean, the the lines can get so blurred. Like people can say it's you know this is art, or do it, you know this is only an artistic version. This is only the contemporary version, but. You know, I, I don't I don't know I don't understand what that is yet. Mm. But maybe starting from being truthful about your life story is the best place because Absolutely. You know, being born in Rockhampton but having such such yeah incredible tuition and ca carrying on of particularly Torres Strait Island dancing, even though you grew up on the mainland. Yeah. Th that's already a blurred line yeah. to start with. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you address that in in the piece yeah it's quite yeah. significant actually like to what that means to know that you've been born on a mainland then the perceptions of what that you know a mainland Torres Strait Islander is to a Torres Strait Islander that was born in the Torres Straits like it's quite it's quite an interesting discovery doing this work and what that means to me and you know I hope hopefully some other people find kind of you know a similar journey I guess also journey. we've talked about and I find it a very relevant issue now is ticking the diversity box. Yeah. Jeez, I tick a lot of boxes. <laughs> you do. <laughs> but it's good to be open about what that means. Yeah. Um, because it's it's also something to be applauded and, and encouraged. But then if it's token... I know, that's, that's exactly like you, right. So that's, you don't want to squash it so and make it not... That's make right. fun of it completely. But when you've been in situations where you've wondered if you're the ticking the yeah, certain box. Ticking the boxes. Yeah. What is, do you, that's very current for you, that? I think that will always be current. You know, this, this country, at this, you know, it kind of, that is what it is. Like they, I feel from personal experiences that it's much better to categorize these things and put people in these boxes that allows them to feel like they're doing everything that they can or you know and I find that more often than not I am ticking someone's box and whether I'm okay with that is yeah. really the question yeah as you say in your, yeah. in your piece because there's there's good things yeah. and there's bad things yeah and there are things that work in a positive That's way right. for your career and life and what you yeah. want to do absolutely and how is it being so closely in the festival as a performer in a work and then in your own work is how are you finding that well it's pretty easy to navigate yep there's and it's to do with responsibility really like this work that i'm doing with force majeure uh, i don't like the only responsibility is for me to just perform but with my work i have a responsibility to my family uh, you know me my stories as well so uh, uh, understanding the impact that it's actually going to have on me when I finish these 18 shows, however many they are. Um, yeah, the, the journey is obviously a lot more personal. So it's definitely going to take a toll. I, mm. have, n I have no doubt. So yeah, so it's they're like... They're, 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 it's clear what the difference is yeah. for you. So yeah, it's quite easy. Like, you know, you, you know you I'm connected with, but not on the level that I'm connected with with my little way. Sure. And, and is there something ultimately, I mean, I, I find this a hard um, thing to answer myself, but is there something ultimately that you want to achieve through being an artist, through making work? Is there some, I don't mean a message, but is there some thing overall that you'd like to I just achieve? want to, I would like to make, I would like to make a black space. I don't really know exactly what that means, but I find that when I create some of my works, it doesn't fit into a particular thing that some people want to program or sometimes if I want to say some things, some people find that jarring. So, uh, you know, how can we, and you know, it's all, it's all about black politics really. 
So how can we say what we want to say in a safe space without it being tokenized? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Still, still navigating what that is. But I, you know, we need more black fellows in mm. the industry, or all across, or wh whatever art form it is. Um, you know, uh, and I'm just saying specifically dance because I'm in dance. Mm. We just need a lot more black fellows to tell their stories and. You know, like Gee, you're in theatre, you're in comedy, you're in, you're definitely well, in theatre as well. Yeah, yep. you are greedy. Yep, I'm quite ambitious. <laughs> ambitious. And I mean, but I, that's you know, great. But, but uh, black fellas, they cover everything like that, though. Mm. You know, we aren't just one thing, and and I want to do that by doing it. Mm. You know, I want to say that by doing it, because mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is that you know. I aspire to inspire you know, when I meet young people and I do dance workshops with them and I see them light up and you can see the dream the fantasies in that like in their eyes you just you know you 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 hope that they get to do what, what they want to do great yeah <laughs>